come in. Welcome. I am E.G. Marshall. Welcome to the sound of suspense, to the fear you can hear. For the next 52 minutes, I will be your trainer. I say trainer because we are concerned with a horse, a remarkable, powerful stallion who not only runs, but who thinks. And what does he think about? In our spine-tingling tale, he will think most about revenge. Go, Spartacus, go! You'll find him. You'll catch him. And what you do, he's yours. All yours. Emily! Emily, here I am! See him, Spartacus. See him. I'm here, Emily. Get him. Well, go, get him. Go, 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 go. Our mystery drama, Death Rides a Stallion, was written especially for the Radio Mystery Theater by Sam Dan and stars Mason Adams. It is sponsored in part by Anheuser-Busch Incorporated, Brewers of Budweiser, and by the Kellogg Company, makers of Kellogg's Special K Cereal. I'll be back shortly with Act One. big five-year-old chestnut stallion. He's in the prime of his glorious life. He has fire in his eyes and steel springs in his legs. The powerful muscles ripple beneath his shiny, velvety coat. And he also has a mind of his own. He's a rebel who acknowledges no master. That's why he's called Spartacus. But if he has no master, he does have a mistress. A slender, freckle-faced girl named Emily, and he will respond to her slightest touch, her softest whisper. Whoa, Spartacus, right here. Steady, boy, steady. Good boy. Listen, Spartacus, here he comes now. Here I am, Frank. Oh, good morning, Uncle Harry. Oh, morning, Emily. Do I uh, detect a faint tone of disappointment? Disappointment? Oh, why, Uncle Harry, you're my favorite human being. Oh, I have the impression that you were expecting someone else. Who? Me? Well, I wasn't expecting anybody. Oh. But look, I, I don't say that Lollygag here is in a class with Spartacus, but we challenge you to race. Uh, well... How about here to Parsons Creek? Uh, now? Unless you just want to stand around all day. Yeah. The truth is, Uncle Harry, I I am waiting for somebody. Oh, oh. oh, that's the secret of your early morning ride. And who is your partner in these assignations? Frank. Oh. Well, there's no accounting for taste, I suppose. I think I'll commune with nature on my own. Oh, Lolly, here. Uncle Harry, wait. Whoa there, Lolly. <laughs> Emily, if everybody listened to you the way the horses do, you could rule the world. Uncle Harry, do you know what I think? No, ma'am. You're too deep for me. I think this morning Frank's going to ask me. Ask you what? Ask me what? Ask me to marry him, of course. Why would Frank do that? Why would he... Oh, I suppose I'm not really pretty enough for a man to ask. No, 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 Emily. I I never meant to imply that I... Why, you're even prettier than Judy. No, I'm not. Nowhere <sighs> near. Well, it's just that, that I thought... That... Oh, what did you think? Well, Emily, it's, it's, it's obvious that Frank really... What's obvious is that you dislike Frank, and therefore you don't even bother to know him. Frank looks for more than a pretty face. Uh, has he uh, given you any uh, indication? Well, of course he has. Really? Well, what, what did he say? He didn't say anything. Does he have to? It would help. Uncle Harry, I know by the tone of his voice, the way he looks at me, everything about him, everything tells me he loves me. And I love him. Oh, how I love him. You think I'm crazy? Uh, I think I'll ride back to the house and have some breakfast. 
the last time I'll bear my soul to you. Darling, look up. I, I, I wouldn't want you to get hurt. I'm a big girl now. You don't know very much about men. Maybe, but I know what I like. Well, sounds like company's coming. Hi. Good morning, sir. Good morning, Emily. Good morning, Frank. Well, look who's here. Kind of early in the day for you, Julie. I know, but we're out to spread the news. What news? Oh, Emily, darling. It's only right that you should be the first to know. After all, you introduced us. Frank and I... We're engaged. And we owe it all to you, Emily. We owe it all to you. And I want you to be my maid of honor. Now, promise. Oh, Emily, darling, I'm so happy. I'm so happy. Judy and I will never forget what you've done for us, Emily. Can you believe this wild man? This fantastic Frank? He asked me just five minutes ago. I mean, I've been proposed to in my time, but never on horseback. <laughs> <laughs> it's another Judy Montgomery fabulous first. Frank, let's ride back to the house and tell Mother... See you. Emily. Oh, they used to say, always a bridesmaid. But this time I'm doing better. Emily, I, I, I tried to tell you. I made of honor. Maybe I'm getting there. Emily, he's not worth it. He is to me. Darling, please don't ride this morning. Why not? You're upset. I'm not upset. Oh, I can tell. All right, I'm upset. Emily, you'll get over it. I'm over it now. Emily, dear, one day you'll, you'll meet... Him. I'll never get over Emily, it. Emily, believe me. Let's go, Spartacus. Go! Oh, Emily, Emily, wait. Emily. Go. Emily. Come on, Spartacus. Emily, Emily. Come on. Slow down. Faster, Spartacus, faster. Emily, Emily, you hurt your heart. Faster, Spartacus. Emily, please, you kill yourself. Go, Spartacus, go. Emily. Emily, look out. Jump, Spartacus, up. Emily, Emily, stop! Emily! Oh. Oh, no. No. Emily. Come in. You wanted to see me, sir? Oh, it's you, Frank. Yes, yeah, sit down. Thank you. Wait till I shut up this music. Oh, let it play. It was her favorite Rhapsody. So it was. Well, how are the ladies? Well, Judy and Mrs. Montgomery have gone to bed. It's been a terrible ordeal. Mm. But with the coroner... Why was all that necessary? You have to establish the cause of death. Well, wasn't it obvious? What a thoroughly obnoxious man. Why did he have to ask so many questions when he knew from the start that his verdict would be accidental death? There isn't anything that I could do about it. But I disagree with the verdict. Well, what other verdict is possible? Murder. Murder? What? Do you mean someone killed her? Yes. Who? You. Me? Yes, you. But that's impossible. Why is it impossible? Well, because I because I, I wasn't even there. You were there. What are you saying, sir? You don't have to call me sir. Don't pretend with me. I can see through you. You're a young hustler on the make. You have no right to accuse me of You a... used Emily to get to Judy. You're going to marry Judy for her money. I don't think I have to sit here and listen to I... it. There's nothing intrinsically wrong with marrying for money. Does anyone seriously believe that poverty improves the quality of love? I married Mrs. Montgomery's sister for her money. Yes, I married her for her money. She married me for my looks. And both of us knew it. And we've had a perfect marriage. But you're a scoundrel. And you won't even give Judy her money's worth. Now look here, sir. I said don't call me sir. You can relax with me. Don't be afraid. Even though every word I say is true, I couldn't prove any of it. None of it's true. You accuse me of killing Emily. That's a lie. You say I was there. You know I wasn't there. I was with Judy. We were riding back to the house. You know it for a fact. <laughs> have a drink. I don't drink. Don't say it so smugly. You have other vices that are worse. I say you were with Emily. I was not. No, don't interrupt. 
Since the very day you met Emily or arranged to meet her, you've been with her always. I think you're mad. Yeah, that's my saving grace. But to say that I was with Emily when you know... You were with her as far as she was concerned. I don't know what you're talking about. So few. So few girls like Emily in the world. Oh, what a shame that you had to waste one of them. You knew that she was in love with you. Well, love, I, I, I'd say it was a crush. Girls like Emily don't have crushes. They fall in love only once, and it's forever. She was in love with you, and you know it. Admit it. What is this, an inquisition? I don't have to put up with it. Of course it. you don't, but don't try my patience either. I'm doing this for your good. For my good? Make it difficult for me, and I'll wash my hands of the whole business. Why do you say for my good? If she fell in love with you of her own accord, well, that's a tragedy, but it's her tragedy. But if you made her fall in love with you... You're guilty of murder. Why? Because you knew it would kill her. The fact that you were only playing with her would kill her. The fact that you were only using her would kill her. All right. Maybe I did lead her to believe that I was in love with her. And it's murder in the first degree. Premeditated. I didn't know she'd take it this way. You knew. You knew it would destroy her one way or another. Okay, Harry. I killed her. That's what you want me to say, isn't it? Yes, well, maybe she'll forgive you. Oh, come on, Harry. That's unworthy of you. Sure, I killed her. And you know why it doesn't destroy me? Because she was a girl who walked around saying to the whole world, kill me. Please, somebody kill me. She was so trusting, so naive. Anybody could have broken her heart. Anybody could have betrayed her. Nobody has a right to be that defenseless. I was just the guy who happened along. Yes. Well, despite it all, she'll forgive you. Sure, Harry. Don't humor me. She loves you. And when she loves, she loves forever. A little thing like death isn't going to stop her. Good morning, Mac. Good morning, Mr. Frank. You going to ride? Who do you want? Spartacus. You do, huh? Saddle him. Saddle him, the man says. What's the problem? The problem's right there in the corral. You can look at the problem. You can listen to the problem. You want to ride Spartacus, Mr. Frank? You go in there. You put the saddle on him. How long has he been acting up? More than a week now. Since we lost Miss Emily. How long can he go on like that? Oh, for another five minutes. Or for the rest of his life. Poor Spartacus. He's kind of in mourning, that's all. Oh, Miss Judy said she'd wait for you at Parsons Creek. I got Bolivar saddled up. You know, Frank, ever since I was a little girl, nice things have always happened to me here at Parsons Creek. You're not listening, Frank. Judy, darling, I wait breathlessly for each word. No. Your mind is somewhere else, and I won't have it. I want all of your attention. Now, what have you been staring at for the past few minutes? Judy, look straight ahead toward that clump of birches at the edge of the field. Why? There's a horse standing there. I don't see anything. Big chestnut. If I didn't know that Spartacus was back in the corral... Have you had breakfast? No, but that doesn't... <laughs> it's the most important meal of the day. You're probably seeing things because you're faint with hunger. What do you mean you don't see anything? And it gives you a bad temper, too. Judy, don't joke with Missing me. Missing breakfast is no joke. We're going to go right back and get you some. Spartacus standing there and someone is on him. Wait. Whoever it was, just moved behind the trees. Come on. Where? We're right over there. I'll prove it. I didn't see anything. I don't have to prove anything. Wait here. Emily. I've been waiting for you here every day. You're not angry with me, are you, Frank? Emily. Where would you like to ride this morning? You know, I never did thank you for that piano rhapsody. It was so thoughtful. Come on, boy. Let's go, boy. Frank, don't go. Don't go, Frank. Where did you go back for breakfast, Frank? Yeah. Yeah. 
<laughs> well, was anybody there? Oh, no. There was nobody there. Nobody at all. dream, and everything will be all right when Frank wakes up. But how can he wake up when we all know he hasn't been sleeping? We'll return shortly with Act Two. And now, Act Two of Death Rides a Stallion. Frank has gotten over the shock of seeing and hearing a dead Emily, but not completely, it seems, as he has breakfast with Judy. More coffee, Frank, darling? Thank you. You know, you weren't exactly filled with chatter and high spirits this morning. Sorry, Judy. You hardly said a word, all during our ride. I guess you're right. I should never skip breakfast. Oh, no, that isn't true. You should always skip breakfast. Or you'll wind up fat as a pig. (laughs) (laughs) The wit and wisdom of Uncle Harry. (laughs) Morning, sir. And how are the true lovers this morning? Oh, I'm fine. Frank is a bit gloomy, though. I'm not gloomy. Yes, I would say you are. I'm an expert on gloom. I was once engaged to a boy. Do you remember him, Uncle Harry, the tall, blonde? Uh, when his father owned uh, all that oil? No, no, he was a redhead. <laughs> the blonde's name was George, something or other. Oh. Anyhow, he was undoubtedly the gloomiest human being east of the Mississippi. Well, Frank, what's the problem? There isn't any problem. Frank's been seeing things. Is that a fact? Now, Judy. Now, Frank, don't deny it. He was actually convinced he saw Spartacus out riding this morning. Spartacus? And somebody was on him. Whoa, that's... Remarkable. Not to mention impossible. In the first place, nobody's been able to ride Spartacus since... Since poor Emily. And, and in the second place, Spartacus hasn't left the stable in all that time. Who was supposed to have been riding him, Frank? Look, the whole thing was a kind of a... A hallucination. Now, please forget it. All right, darling. Will you be judge at the competitions this year, Uncle Harry? Well, is it still on? After all, darling, we're in mourning. Oh, would Emily have wanted us to call off the show? What better way is there to remember her? Poor child. Frank, do you think that we sh- Where's Frank? Uh, well, he was just sitting here. Where'd he go? Come on, Spartacus. Come on, calm down, boy. Calm down. Everything's all right. Everything's going to be all right. I want to talk to you. Uh, Oh, good morning. Uh, That's Spartacus. Still can't do a thing with you. You don't have to play that game for me anymore, Mac. Game, Mr. Frank? Tell me the truth or I'm going to beat it out of you. You raise your hand to me and I'll be forced to break your jaw. Nothing the matter with Spartacus. He was out riding this morning. Well, that's news to me. Who's paying you off? Mr. Frank, the jaw of yours is starting to look like a good target. You saddled Spartacus after I left here. I saw him. He was near Parsons Creek. Oh, you ain't well. You want to sit down? I'll get you a glass of water. Now, now, just get get your filthy hands off me. Frank, Frank, what's the matter? Nothing, 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 nothing is the matter, Judy. Jack. I think the, uh, the sun's a little strong this morning, Miss Judy, and you know these city fellows, they, they never wear hats. Frank, you don't look well at all. I'm fine. Now listen, darling, listen to me. I'm going to call Dr. Stone. I don't and... need a doctor. Yes, you do. You do? I don't want to hear another word. You just go to your room and rest. <laughs> You, darling. I don't want to hear another word. Just go to your room and rest. <laughs> well, I could tell who's going to wear the pants in your family. Not to mention the shorts and the slacks. When $26 million tells me to go up to my room, I go. There's a bit of an exaggeration there. She only has 23. Well, it won't change my style of living. What's this I hear about you uh, hallucinating? <laughs> I'll admit you had me going, Uncle Harry. I had you going? Never a minute back there, I believed. Oh, did I ever believe? 
What did you believe, Frank? I believed, and listen to this, I believed that the dead return. I believed that I actually saw Emily sitting on horseback, sitting on Spartacus. Oh, of course it was your imagination. No, it wasn't. You mean she was sitting on Spartacus? Let's say somebody was sitting on Spartacus. Somebody you hired, an actress what? made up to look like Emily. Why would I do a thing like that? Because you know I hate your guts. Oh, come on, Frank. You don't really. Oh, I do. And once I marry Judy and start assuming some control around here, you will be thrown out on your ear. Frank, you wouldn't. And you can either starve to death or you can find somebody else to sponge on. Oh, I see. That's why I'm trying to drive you crazy. Exactly, but it won't work. Yes, I could have hired someone to impersonate Emily. But I could never get her on Spartacus. That horse is completely unmanageable. I think you're bribing that fool down at the stables. Oh, don't let that pose of his throw you. He's far from a fool. Actually, he's a physicist. You plan to put this girl, this actress, on Spartacus, and my vivid imagination would then do the rest. He just realized one day that live horses were more interesting than dead mathematics. Oh, I blew it this morning. No question about that. I panicked. I lost my cool. First, when I actually thought it was Emily. Second, when I tried to put muscle on that moron at the stables. Frank, believe me, his IQ is higher than yours. I lost points with Judy, but it'll never happen again. Sorry to end your fun so soon, Uncle Harry. Come in. Frank, darling. I came by to check. Has he been resting, Uncle Harry? Oh, yes, yes. He's been as good as gold. My darling Judy, won't you believe I'm all right? You didn't look all right, and you didn't sound all right just a little while ago. Well, I'm fine right now. I'm just fine. Oh, that's good, darling. Because we're having dinner with the Farringtons. Far oh, Judy, he's such a bore. Oh, of course. But he has one of the biggest stock brokerage firms in the country. We were talking about making you vice president. Judy, I'm not interested. Frank, darling... You'll have to do something. I don't know anything about... And there's no reason you can't learn. Now, Uncle Harry knows all about finance. Let him teach you. Will you, Uncle Harry? Oh, gladly. I'll pop in again soon, just to check on you. <laughs> Does she know your plan to assume control after the wedding? Don't you worry about me. I know how to handle women. Well, Judy has all the money. But you know you'd have been much happier with Emily... I was so proud of you this evening, Frank. You were so attentive and so interested. You hung on Jim Farrington's every word. I'm going to work for him. No, dear, not for him. With him. After all, Mother and I are major stockholders in Farrington and Company. But don't you find stocks and bonds? Slow down, Judy. Slow down. Uh, Look out, Judy. Judy, you all right? Oh, of course I'm all right. Why did you make me skid off the road? Uh, there was, there was, there was, there was somebody up ahead. I didn't see anybody. Yeah, there was somebody up ahead on horseback. On a horseback? At eleven o'clock at night? I, I could have sworn I. Uh, maybe, maybe, maybe it was the shadows. Oh, you have this thing for people on horseback, Frank. Oh, I'm never going to get out of this ditch. We're less than a mile from home. Let's walk. Oh! Oh, no! We'll have to wait till it lets up. Oh, we could wait all night. I tell you, I can run to the house, pick up another car, and be back in ten minutes. Oh, I was waiting for you to suggest a gallant thing, darling. You mind waiting alone? Why should I mind? These are my woods. Well, there goes... Hello, Frank. What? Emily. Poor oh, Frank. You're getting soaked. Climb up. Ride with me. Emily, what what do you want? I want you to come with me, Frank. Where? Where we can just be together all the time. Just you and me, Frank. You love me. This is some kind of trick. But it isn't working. Harry, he hired you. No, Frank. I'm Emily. Really? When I saw you this morning, you mentioned the piano rhapsody. Harry knew about it. He coached you. No, Frank. Only you and I know about the day we met. Only you and I. Excuse me. I think this is my seat. Oh, it's... 
my ticket stubs says R1. So does mine. Hey, look at the date on your ticket. It's for tomorrow. Oh. Well, look, you, you, you take the seat anyhow. Oh, but I couldn't. I insist. Now sit down and enjoy yourself. And we met in the lobby at intermission. And you bought me a lemonade. And when I said my name was Emily Montgomery, you said... Of the Montgomerys? Well, yes, that's what we're called. Hey, I had no idea I was buying a lemonade for an heiress. Oh, I'm not an heiress. My stepsister Judy has the money. Come with me, Frank. No. Don't be afraid, Frank. I love you. I wouldn't harm you. Come with me. I, I can't go with you, Emily. Why, Frank? Why? Because, be, because you're dead. Oh, no, Frank. Love never dies. And neither do lovers. You remember that verse you once recited? So speak to me of parting never. For all who love shall live forever. Get away from me. Frank. I forgive you for Judy. Keep away, I said. You were poor all your life, and when she smiled... Keep away, please. But I'm the one you love. I'm the one you want. Come with me, Frank. Keep away from me. Frank! Don't go, Frank! Keep away from me. Keep away from me. Keep away from me. And so... We have here a man who is sprinting down a country road at midnight in a pouring rain, shouting, keep away from me. And his urgent plea is directed to a dead young lady. And yet, 12 hours ago, he was convinced that the dead do not return. We'll return shortly with Act Three. country road in the dead of night. It can try the souls of the most practical of men. Pragmatic, sensible Frank is now terrified, delirious Frank. Keep away from me. Keep away. Keep away. What? 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 Lie back, Frank. Lie what? back what? and be quiet. What? How? How did, how, did I, how did I get here? What am I... What am I doing in bed? Judy found you lying on the road unconscious. I waited in the car for almost an hour. <laughs> I thought you'd taken this as an excuse to run out on me. Oh, Judy, don't say that. Right, darling, now don't excite yourself. No, I'm fine. I'm okay. See, the rain had let up, and I started to walk home. And there was someone lying in the road. And it was you. What happened, I, 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 I must have tripped over something, or maybe I, I ran to a low-hanging branch. I, I guess I was knocked out. And, and you kept moaning, keep away from me. Uh, why? Well, Who? I don't know. I, 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 I just, I guess I must have been having a nightmare. Well, listen, the first thing in the morning, we'll see Dr. Stoneman. But right now, what you need is some sleep. And we'd better leave you alone. Are you coming, Uncle Harry? Yeah, just a minute. Frank, dear, you look very tired. You try to get some rest. Good night, my darling. Good night. <laughs> so... You were running, you tripped, you fell, you were knocked unconscious. Oh, no. No, that story won't do. You don't have a mark on you. What are you talking about? She's starting to have second thoughts, Frank. Bad move. You should have chosen Emily. No 23 million there, but she wasn't exactly a welfare case either. It won't work, Uncle Harry. You can't hope to psych me out of it. Nobody can psych me out of it. Little things, Frank. Little straws in the wind. For instance, she just said, I waited in the car. I thought you'd taken this excuse to run out on me. What she really meant, Frank. She might be looking for an excuse to run out on you. Enjoy yourself, Harry. I've been with that girl through... Oh, it has to be at least a dozen engagements. Each one is like a fever. It runs a predictable course. And you can always tell when she's reached the crisis... She becomes thoughtful. Pour you another glass of wine, dear. Judy, more wine? No. 
Oh, thank you. What a glorious spot for a picnic. Frank, did you tell Dr. Stoneman everything? Of course. You heard what he said. I am 100%. Did you say anything about that mysterious rider? What mysterious rider? Oh, I know for a fact you've seen it twice. Once yesterday morning and again on the road last night. The rider who's supposed to be on Spartacus. What's there to say about it? It's impossible. Who can even get a saddle on Spartacus these days? Then why do you keep seeing him with someone on his back? Truly, darling, didn't you ever have a momentary flash from, well, an illusion? No. Not really. I take after Dad, both feet on the ground. You know, it's a pity you never knew my dad. There was a man for you. You're a lot like him, except... Well, except when you get these... What do you call them? Delusions? No. He wasn't like that at all. Who's that coming? I don't see any, but... Oh, Frank, not again. Hello, Frank. What's the matter, darling? Nothing. Nothing is the matter. I'm fine. Well, you don't look it. Come with me, my dearest. Frank... Are you sure you don't have some deep, dark secret? Come with me. She won't mind if you come with me. I always thought I wanted to marry a man of mystery, but... Judy and I, we grew up together. We loved each other as sisters do. Frank, are you sure you haven't been drinking? She wouldn't have taken you if she knew I loved you. Judy, let's go back to the house. But we just got here. No, but please. Don't go with her, Frank. Come with me. All right, we might as well. I can tell you're not going to be much fun today. Good morning, Mr. Frank. Do anything for you? Matt, Spartacus has been here all morning, hasn't he? This time you don't have to take my word for it. The vet's in the stable. He's been here all morning. Ask him. Want me to call him? No, no, no. Never mind. Hey, you, you look you look nervous, Mr. Frank. You ought to get some rest. Yeah, sure. Sure, the vet's been here all morning, and so is Spartacus. Why do you keep asking? How, how, how long will it take you to saddle, Spartacus? The way he is now? Forever. I'm going to ride, Spartacus. Mr. Frank. Now, that is a damn fool thing to do. If you won't saddle him, I will. I tell you what, Mr. Frank. This is a bad time. Toward evening, he kind of simmers down a bit, and that's the best time to try. Right now, he'd kill the both of us. That's five o'clock. Oh, I'd say five o'clock's just fine. Come in. Well, I'm here to attend your education as a budding financier, as per your fiancé's instructions. So, let's begin with something right up your alley. Let me tell you about watered stock. Oh, shut up. People have been talking about you. Mac in the stables, for one. He tells me that you intend to ride Spartacus. That's right. Why? Harry, at first I thought you were out to destroy my mind with an actress who was impersonating Emily on Spartacus. That's impossible. (laughs) Might have been fun at that. Now I know for sure that I am having hallucinations. I keep seeing Emily. Oh, that's bad. But as long as I'm aware of it, I can handle it. It's my own mind, and I can control it. Hooray for you. The key to this thing is Spartacus. If I can break that horse, I can break this whole psychological hang Well, that's what you think it is, a psychological hang Absolutely. Judy's also been talking about you. She's uh, a little disturbed. I didn't notice. Yeah, key sign. Tell me, did she talk about her father yet? No. You sure? What, she... She happened to mention him briefly. But his name did come up. Just in passing. Oh, bad news for you. Why don't you get out of here? I don't think she'll ever marry anybody. None of this is going to work, Harry. Her daddy was just too overwhelming a man. She's attracted to guys who resemble him. And then when she finds out the resemblance is only superficial... She's done it no fewer than 12 times. Oh, my goodness. You're number 13. Will you get out of here? I'm supposed to teach you how to be a stockbroker. Cut it out. Well, here you are, you two. Hard at work, I hope. 
How are the lessons coming? The lessons are coming to an end. <laughs> you mean you've learned everything already? I don't intend to learn anything. I don't care about finance. I won't go into an office with that idiot Farrington. And when we're married, I intend to make the decision. Well, uh, of course. Now, what I... did you want to see me about? Well, I, I just came up to find out if you were all right. Obviously, I'm fine. Oh, well, well I'll see you at dinner. That's how you handle women, Uncle Harry. That's how you regain control of your mind. And now, I'm going for a walk. Oh, if you happen to see Emily riding Spartacus, say hello for me. Hello, Frank. Emily, you're either in my mind or you really are out there. I'm out here, Frank. Either way, I can live with it. You won't destroy me. Oh, my darling. I'm not here to destroy you. I'm here to save you. Emily, I don't love you. Believe me, I used you. I used you to meet Judy. No, Frank, that's not true. You love me. Some stranger. Something. Someone who's alien to your very nature was attracted to Judy. Oh, Frank, she won't marry you. She doesn't love she you. She will marry me. I've come for you, Frank. We'll be together always. Go away from me. Speak to me of parting never. For those who love shall live forever. Emily, I don't want you. Yes, you do. Oh, how badly you want me. How you need I me. I can live with this. I can keep seeing you and talking to you. It won't destroy me. I'll just get used to it. I will get used to it. <laughs> so soon, Frank. Have a nice walk. Boy, thought Judy would be here. Wanted to find out what the plan was for dinner. Aren't you the newly appointed planner? No, not when it comes to dinner. That's a woman's prerogative. Well, Judy isn't here. Where'd she go? She left for the airport. Why? I wouldn't know. Did something come up suddenly? Probably. Oh, she uh, left you this note. Thanks. How lucky we are to find out sooner rather than late. Obviously, it isn't going to work. The one thing I must have in my life is someone solid, dependable. Someone who has a clearly defined goal and purpose. You're wonderful, Frank, but so moody, so unpredictable. How ironic. You would have been just right for Emily. I realize that now. Had she lived, I'm sure you would have found each other. I hope we can meet again as friends. Judy. Well, Frank, I'm sorry. Uh, let me pour you a drink. I'll ride that damn horse. I'll kill him. Frank! Yes, Mr. Frank. Will you saddle Spartacus? No, sir. Saddle him. I have strict orders from Miss Judy that no one's to ride Spartacus at this time. Anyhow, sir, he's impossible. No, no, no. He's standing there very quiet. Well, that's just for the moment. Frank. Oh, Frank, darling. There's Miss Emily. She's getting ready to ride him. Miss Emily? There she is, right beside him. You see Miss Emily? Of course. Come with me, Frank, darling. We'll be together now. Yes, Emily. I was so foolish. Mr. Frank, please tell me, who are you talking to? Now, Miss Emily. Come, Frank. Yes, Emily. You're all I have. Climb up behind me. We'll ride Spartacus together. Hey, Mr. Frank, Mr. Frank, you, where do you think you're going? You can't go in that corral at her. It'll kill you. Spartacus, look at him. So still, so gentle. I can't let you go in there. It's all right. Emily and I will ride him together. Come, Frank. Let's go, Mr. Frank. No, Frank. Mr. Frank, Bert, Bert, quick, quick, come on. Give me a hand. I can't hold I'm waiting, Frank. Let me go. I'm coming, Emily. Mr. Frank, get out of that corral. Climb on, Frank. Climb on. Get away from that horse. Get away. Don't be afraid of him, Frank. Climb on. Don't touch him, Mr. Frank. Back away, back away. Here. Now 
Don't touch me. Help me. Don't touch me. Don't touch me. Take my hand, Frank. Yes. Take my hand. Yes, Emily, yes. Don't touch that horse. Don't be afraid, Frank. Emily, give me your hand. Emily, where are you? Emily! <laughs> Emily, help me! Help me! Mr. Frank! No! no. Jerry, call an ambulance. As you can already guess, the ambulance was too late. But, as the poem says, those who love shall live forever. If Frank truly loved Emily at the end, then both of them will be together somewhere forever. I'll be back shortly. story of Spartacus? Well, maybe you should, because whenever we vouch for something, we say it's from the horse's mouth. That's because everyone knows that horses never lie. Our cast included Mason Adams, Marion Seldes, Paul McGrath, Barbara Worthington, and Harry Belliver. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams. <laughs> <laughs>